Welcome to Somerville Live Wire. I'm Mary Ellen Muir. If you've driven down Broadway, you may have noticed that the Winter Hill Star Market is closed and has been closed for more than 10 years. And over the years, various proposals have been put forth, but sometimes residents objected to big box stores, but the city needs more housing and needs to increase the commercial tax brace. So it's really important that this get done. Well, there's some good news on this front. A company called Mark Development LLC has put forth the framework of a plan. And they've had meetings with many of the stakeholders, including neighbors and city officials. And what they have in mind is a mixed use development with retail on the ground floor and then residential housing above that. So I wanted to give you a chance to see where it is that we're talking about. So I'm going to share my screen here. So if you'll just bear with me. So here on the map, you can see it's 299 Broadway. And so it's between Magoon Square and 93 on the east. And on the next slide, I can show you this is what it looks like in the Google Street View. So here is the Star Market. Here's the big parking lot. Here's Walgreens to the left. And you can see through the parking lot to the street on the other side. And here it is from above the satellite view. So again, over here is the Winter Hill Liquor Mart and Walgreens. Here's the Star Market. Here's the parking lot. And then we've got the street on the other side. Now, they did ask for some zoning changes. So on the left is the current zoning requirements. So MR5 means five stories. So it's zoned up to five stories here and three stories here. And what Mark is proposing is that this be increased to six stories here and four stories in the back. So rather than five and three, six and four with a little bit of an increase with the highest levels there. But this is going to be offset by what they call setbacks. So what that means is that on the very closest to the street, even though it's zoned for six, it would only be five stories high with the sixth story setback from the edge of the building. And then that would also be true in the back where it's zoned for four, but it would only be three stories um, on the outside and then stepped back would be four stories and then the six stories um, further in from that. And then you can see that they have a, a walk through space um, to that back um, to the back street there. So I had a chance to talk with um, some of the, the key stakeholders. So we have Jake Wilson, who is not only a neighbor, but he's also the newly elected um, city councilor at large, along with three people from Mark Development. First, Robert Korf, who is the CEO and founding principal, Damian Chaviano, who is a principal, and Adam Benjamin, who is the development manager. So I had a chance to speak with them and the rest of the show is gonna be that conversation. So I'd like to start with Jake. Jake, you've been involved with this for so many years and um, as a neighbor, you've walked past it, biked past it, <laughs> attended many community meetings. Tell us a little bit about um, what's happened over the years and um, your perspective on this project. Yeah, I moved into the neighborhood back in 2004. I can remember when that actually was an operational star market, believe it or not. Um, it closed in early 2008 and the neighbors were really hopeful something good would come in and replace it. Um, when the owner of the property, Mr. Cohen, uh, tried to bring in Ocean State job lot back in 2008, the neighbors opposed it. Uh, the big box store was not what we wanted. Um, we didn't like the fact that they'd be keeping a giant parking lot there. We viewed it as wasted space. Uh, and and we, we felt it would exacerbate some existing traffic issues in the area, specifically on Temple Street. Um, so cue a decade long court battle that only just got resolved in 2020 uh, between the city and, and, and Mr. Cohen. Um, Ward 4 Councilor Jesse Klingon, I know has prioritized trying to get something done with this lot. Uh, DLJ, another developer, um, had presented a proposal to the public back in May 2018. Uh, it met with a lot of concerns from the neighborhood uh, about the amount of public space, the, just the design of it, uh, but especially the height uh, generated a lot of comment, generally not positive from neighbors. Uh, the project ended up not moving forward. Uh, then in 
early 2021, the Summerville Redevelopment Authority held some meetings about uh, the Winter Hill Urban Renewal Plan. Uh, I felt like from these meetings that my gauge was that there was general support from the neighborhood, but with some concerns about uh, the equity because they would be taking that corner part of that of that site uh, that has businesses in it right now. Um, so when I heard about Mark Development's proposal over the summer, uh, I was curious. I was pleasantly surprised by the July 22nd meeting. They talked about mixed use uh, development with affordable units and, and what, what they call POPs, uh, privately owned public space uh, that would help with some, some open space in, in the area. I had some concerns about ADA issues, but those were alleviated after looking at some of the elevations uh, that were in their plans. Uh, I missed the second meeting in August due to campaigning for, uh, for public office, but I heard that people were really impressed with Mark Development's responsiveness to the neighborhood's feedback at that initial meeting. Uh, and then while knocking a lot of doors this fall for the campaign, I encountered a lot of positivity about the project from neighbors, uh, especially direct to Butters, which impressed me. Uh, it turned out that there was been a lot of community engagement by Mark Development, knocking doors, talking to people, uh, and that people have found them flexible and that they felt listened to, uh, which is a fairly new experience uh, for a lot of people with developers. I have to say that's a very interesting reaction because there's a lot of development throughout the city. And quite frankly, I think a lot of summer villains are skeptical of developers in general. <laughs> I see a lot of that on social media. I hear that in many, many conversations. So I'd like to um, turn to um, Robert Quark, if you could just um, share a little bit about um, Mark development and why you and, and some of the other projects that you have going going on right now so that people have an understanding of who you are. Okay. Um, so I'll give you a brief, uh, some brief background on uh, Mark development um, quickly to roll the clock <laughs> forward to, to present day times. But Mark development was formed in 1989 um, and primarily between 89 and the year 2010. Um, I was primarily focused on retail and uh, mostly on the development side of retail. So I'd work with the national retailers primarily, um, permitting site, you know, securing land, assembling land, permitting the sites, getting consensus amongst neighborhoods, and then construct and lease back to retailers. And I, I built up um, over that you know, roughly 20 year time period, a large portfolio, um, uh, mostly made up of uh, drugstore projects. So we would go out and you know, working hand in hand with uh, mostly Walgreens drugstore and you know, create these locations and you know, basically be the people out there engaging with the communities. You know, they, they were a large corporation and didn't really get the, the politics, particularly in the Northeast um, and how things, you know, need to work in the development arena in, in terms of building consensus amongst neighborhoods. I took a hiatus uh, from about 2010 to 2013 and did uh, about 12 megawatts of uh, solar farm development um, around Massachusetts. Um, so I got some familiarity there with, you know, certainly uh, uh, solar installations and, and, and sustainability in general. I took that uh, portfolio of uh, retail and methodically over, you know, approximately a two year process liquidated um, you know, most of that portfolio. So in other words, it built up, you know, a war chest of, of, of equity, whereby I could go out and do what I had always, you know, wanted to do, which is mixed use development. But I had finally reached a point in my career where I could capitalize the company and position us in a way where we could successfully do that. Um, and that's when I formed the team, um, brought Damien in here in a partnership role in a leadership position. Um, 
He had uh, extensive experience in the mixed use development field developing um, for companies, Samuels and uh, Associates. Um, they kind of transformed the whole Fenway area. The company got established. You know, I decided then I, I live in Newton. I've lived in the city of Newton since 1995. And it was always, you know, a mystery to me why, you know, my hometown, the landscape, the development landscape was basically non-existent. I got a quick education on, on the politics here. And, and it, it, it's very challenging, very difficult. And, you know, we have a much, uh, when compared to Somerville, uh, we have a much older demographic and, and being in the development field, you know, for 35 some odd years, you know, I've seen going from municipalities to municipalities that, that age plays a big role. It, you know, the, the older the demographic, the, the harder it is to, to impose change. Um, people kind of get set in their ways, which is mm -hmm. understandable. And, and Newton's a very demographically uh, age-wise old city. Um, but in spite of all those barriers and challenges that, that we had ahead of us, I sit here now, you know, approximately six years later and can tell you that, you know, our first development, which it was very important for us to, to build like we're doing now in Somerville, to, mm -hmm. to build a reputation uh, of how we operate and you know win the hearts and minds of, of the community and we successfully did that with the first project um, which is now complete up and running and successfully leased out both ground floor and upper floors and you know people are, are looking at it very positively i have been looking you know over the past year or so had been looking to you know recognizing that the opportunities in newton are are kind of, you know, getting dried up, you know, they've been maximized mostly by, by our company. Um, you know, I'm starting to look ahead uh, vision wise, like where's our next stop? Where, where can we do some good work and, and bring our, our talents? And that's when Somerville's always been a community. I was very interested in developing. There's been several potential projects over the past five years that we've taken a look at, but um, just for multiple reasons, different reasons in each instance, never came to fruition. So when, when 299 Broadway, um, just out of the blue, it was presented to me as an opportunity um, by somebody I know in the industry who knew Cohen, um, you know, he came to me and, and, and said, I think you're just the kind of guy that, you know, might be able to, to get Jimmy Cohen under wraps here and, and, and do something great with that site. Um, so, you know, I was very intrigued by the opportunity. It, on its surface, looked exactly like the kind of thing we love to do, aside from getting involved in an urban renewal plan that had just passed. Um, or was about to pass at that time. Um, so we took it on though. I signed it up, I recognized. So, uh, excuse me, sorry for interrupting, but th so it, sure. they came to you rather than you going around and looking for um, for a project in Somerville, it sounds yes. like. Yeah, that is correct. Okay, um, all right, That's that sounds great. So, I mean, and uh, you know, unfortunately we only have, you know, um, we, we would love to know um, more about, you know, all of these things, but kind of specifically to Somerville, you mentioned um, demographics and age um, um, and, and that sort of a thing. I mean, I guess, you know, and maybe Damien, if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about what do you anticipate working in Somerville that might be different from working um, in other communities? Well, you want me to speak to that first, Damien? Uh, Damien right. has really been out there. Okay, yet. okay, sure, go ahead. You will be seeing a lot of him in the future uh, as we head into the special permit process. Yeah. But for me personally, you know, I've been extremely impressed with the community engagement. You know, Somerville has a very young, well-educated, you know, population that, you know, recognizes, you know, the most... Important thing I think that Somerville has when compared to Newton that Newton didn't have is, is a demographic and, and a group of citizens that 
are fully engaged and but are also educated in development and understand the process and understand the trade-offs. So in other words, you know, people quickly get that, you know, the trade-off, you know, for height is potentially more open space or more, you know, uh, more other community benefits. It could be a number of things, but people aren't afraid of density, you know, in the city of Somerville um, because they, density is not an evil word. And yeah. To me, that, I, that, 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 that's been remarkable. And, yeah. and it allows a group like us, it gives us the tools to really work with people, right? You know, it, yeah, it, yeah. I mean, one of the things that I've heard is that um, people were impressed with, for example, the fact that it was going to be very en energy efficient, you know, um, meaning the very high requirements that Somerville has um, in, in, you know, in terms of green building and that kind of a thing. Um, so, but, but you know, what about the permitting process? I mean, I know that you um, asked to have the residential zoning changed, you know, for additional height, for example. Um, has that process been easier or harder than, um, for example, in Newton? Oh, it, it was significantly easier. Um, the rezoning got done, I think, uh, first week of December. And I didn't have my first community meeting until July 20, you know, July 22nd, which, you know, in, in Newton, that, that would never happen. Right. Um, so, you know, there, there was just, I don't know what it was. We, we, we do the work we do. I, we have a style of doing it. And I think it just connected with people. Maybe it was the timing as well. And, you know, people, really, they, I guess, believe in us and believe that we can pull off what, what we're proposing here. And, you know, I, I will, you know, on, on the environment, uh, I'm curious on the environmental sustainability comment that you made. We, we have not yet made any, you know, specific commitments. We do strive for, for, for the highest sustainability package that, that we can deliver. Um, you know, we will consider things like passive house and things of that nature but you know it, it starts to get economics start to get into the picture in that evaluation and and you know we just we're not at the point where we've made any commitment and to be honest that that for me that's there's been a lot of enthusiasm around the work that we've done to date and what we're proposing and how we've gone about things and I, I am, I want to continue that, you know, and, and I remain extremely positive that, that this is going to be a very, you know, productive and engaging and fruitful process all the way through. But I do get nervous here that this, it's been an unusual process where it's been so prescriptive with the community and the city up front, the rezoning was done on a very prescriptive basis to, to fit the design of the project that we were presenting. So in the special permit process, I don't know what more, you know, typically it's when you get to the special permit process that you have to make, you know, certain concessions, but this project has been so prescriptive, right? It, it has really no flexibility to move from here. So it, it, it does concern me as we enter the special permit process. We have some work to do here. You know, I don't- That's you know, the it, question I'm, about, yeah. So the devil's in the details, I guess, yeah. um, you know, and as you move forward. So Jake, when, you know, as a resident and as a city councilor, um, you know, what are the kinds of questions that come up? I mean, how is the city council going to be um, involved with this? I mean, we have a new city council, we have a new mayor. Um, what do you anticipate might come up going forward? Well, you know, as with any development, just, you know, that you're going to have basic issues about, you know, like you said, the devil is in the details. Uh, you know, I know there will be members of the council that will want to talk about, you know, um, what kind of labor is being used on a project, um, you know, uh, yeah, and yeah, talking about green building, 
all that stuff. You know, it, this is all this is all stuff that uh, there are going to be a lot of questions asked about. You know, um, and yeah, I, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna sound the same note I've been sounding. Or you know, I'm optimistic because everything to date um, has has gone very very well, and I, I'm hopeful of that continuing. But so, to, to play off of uh, Jake's um, comments just then, you know, and going back to, to what I had just said. So this project, right, when, when we went for the reason, everything we presented and everything we asked for in the rezoning, assumed things, you know, assumed that the 20% affordability that, that's required in the ordinance, you know, was going to be enough that, that we weren't going to be asked to pile on more affordable units. Um, so that's one example. It also, you know, you know we're, we're very big now on um, D and I, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we're, we're working very hard now prior to the special permit process to, to, to roll out what, what that looks like as it relates to this project. That's where our focus is. Um, and, and that pertains to some of the labor as well that we'd like to bring in. Um, but if, if that conversation shifts to like union labor by way of, of um, example, you know, the, the cost of that is not factored in to, to what we has been prescribed and what the, the rezoned was fitting into. So, I think Jake was spot on with, with his comments. You know, those are the things that, that do concern me going into the special permit process. Yeah, so there's, there's you know, the, the construction of the, um, you know, so union labor creating it, there are, you know, the mix of um, business versus residential um, units within the property, affordable housing, um, you know, the, the from your perspective, um, do you make more money the more businesses that are in a facility? Um, what, you know, how does residential versus commercial property affect your development? Well, every deal is different. In, in this particular deal here, um, it's clearly um, the, the residential is, is driving the economics. And in fact, the retail to, to the best of our abilities you know, on the financial side, the pro forma, um, the retail, we've really dummied down economically. By dummy down, I mean, assumed, you know, what we consider to be below market rents um, and above market um, tenant improvement contribution dollars, things like that, because it's very important to us that the retail be successful because the energy of this project and its success is going to be created from the ground floor up. So we wanted to be in a position where we can bring in local retailers and bring a local flavor to this. We, we don't want to have, you know, a bank, you know, an AT&T mobile shop uh, next to right. you know, our national drugstore. That's not yeah. what we're trying to achieve here. We want to bring in, you know, a real local mix of tenants and to some degree subsidize them and their ability to get in here. So the yeah, answer so to your question is, is basically the retail is a very important piece of the equation but not the financial piece yeah so we only have two minutes left what type of businesses would you anticipate would be in those spaces only commercial space on the ground floor of this project okay. and there's fifteen thousand square feet of it three thousand of it we've already um dedicated off as a community piece of this uh, community center the programming of it is something we want to engage further with the community on in terms of how it can be used by the community. The other 12,000 square feet is going to be activation type retail. And got it, that got means it. primarily, you know, we want to be heavily food based, you know, with, with local food people, not, you know, your typical national franchise, you know, food restaurants. Then right. everything above is everything residential. Above 
is residential. Okay. So, you know, again, we only have, you know, probably 30 seconds left here. So what do you think, you know, so what, when is the next um, big decision? When are you going to get to those um, devilish details um, that we were talking about? Well, we're, we're in the process now. This is a learning curve going through the the new zoning and the requirements uh, of the city of Somerville. They just passed a new ordinance and we're putting together all the applications. We're gonna have a pre-meeting, you know, probably uh, sometime in February. Um, I forget the formal name of that meeting, um, but we're filing for both um, a variance that we need as well as a site plan approval. And I'm sorry, Adam, you're, you're probably more in tune with the exact schedule. What are we on track for? Sure, Robert. So <clears throat> we have to file a, what's called a pre-submittal application. We're aiming to do that before the end of January. That will then set us up for a meeting to discuss uh, that application with the city. Um, it'll be it'll review the sub lots. We have to break up the overall site into a lot per building and then lots for uh, the open space in the front, what we're calling a pocket plaza. Um, that's all to tee up to our first neighborhood meeting, which we okay. are earmarking to middle of March, where you know we'll be in front of the neighborhood showing design, uh, showing the subdivision, and and to uh, Councillor Wilson's point, you know we'll we'll be open to the public for their questions on workforce, retail mix, open space, ADA, um, and creating a multi generational uh, ground floor active environment. Um, so that's really the the first kind of flag. Um, that we're all marching to. Yeah, okay. And I, so well, I'm I, sorry. I we're that. we're absolutely out of time. I'm very very sorry. We've gone we've gone over our time. So I just want to thank all of you for joining us. Um, there's so much to cover. So we'll definitely be um, um, talking about this again in future shows. So thank you very much um, for those watching. Thank you for joining us. And we'll be back for the next edition of Somerville Livewire.